Imagine stepping off a plane and realizing you've just landed on an island that was built entirely by engineers. Well, this is a real place, and it's called Kansai International Airport. This mega airport is in Japan and is one of the most extraordinary civil engineering projects of our time. And it's not just an airport, it's a floating city. Built on a man-made island in Osaka Bay, Kansai had to be built strong enough to stand up to earthquakes, powerful storms called typhoons, and even the constantly moving sea. But how did engineers manage to pull off this mega project? In this video, we'll explore the incredible civil engineering that went into building Kansai, the airport that floats. First, why do you think Japan would even decide to build an airport on water? Well, Japan is a small, crowded country with limited flat land, especially near big cities like Osaka. And building an airport on land would need to disturb homes, businesses, and nature. So, in the early 1980s, Japan's government decided to try something totally new. They set out on a bold project to create a massive, flat island in the bay and build the airport there. This allowed engineers to design an airport close to Osaka while keeping the precious land, buildings, and homes intact. Now, building a new airport is already a challenging task. But building an airport on a man-made island that you have to construct first? Now that's a mega challenge! So, what was the first step? It was to build an island strong enough to hold up a huge airport without sinking or being damaged by natural disasters. And Japan is known to have lots of natural disasters, like earthquakes and typhoons. So, to do this, engineers had to dig up and transport tons of earth and rock to form the base of the island. They created what's called a landfill island by piling up all this earth and rock onto the seabed. But just dumping a pile of dirt into the sea wasn't enough. After all, how would they know that the piles would stay intact deep underwater? Well, they knew they needed to make sure the island wouldn't sink under the weight of the airport. So, they drove long steel and concrete piles deep into the ground beneath the sea. Piles are long, column-like structures that can be used to help stabilize structures. Think of these piles as giant stilts that would help hold up the island. These legs keeps Kansai's island steady, even on Osaka Bay's soft seabed, which would otherwise cause the island and buildings to sink. Fun fact! Engineers used 21 million cubic yards of earth to make Kansai's island, which is enough to fill the Empire State Building more than 70 times. Now, even with all this work, the island started sinking as soon as it was built. This problem is called settlement in civil engineering. When you put a heavy object, like an airport, on soft ground, it weighs the ground down. Engineers knew the island would sink to some degree, but hoped it would settle slowly and that their designs would help prevent it. Unfortunately, it sank faster than they expected, about 20 inches a year at first. So, to slow down the sinking, engineers used a method called preloading. What this means is they added extra weight to the island during construction to compress the seabed. This helped reduce the rate of sinking a bit, but it didn't completely solve the problem. Kansai Airport still sinks a bit each year, even to this day. But you don't need to worry, the airport is constantly monitored so that adjustments can be made as needed. Fun fact! It took about 10,000 workers just to finish building the foundation alone. Now, going back to the original construction, once the engineers were able to get the island sinking steady enough, they could start building the actual airport. Kansai's main terminal was designed by a famous architect named Renzo Piano. Its stunning glass design gives passengers amazing views of the sea through their walls of windows. And it is one of the longest terminals in the world and stretches over a mile long. But engineers had to deal with the challenges of designing this long terminal. They had to make sure the structure was strong enough to survive Japan's natural disasters. To support the terminal, engineers used a system called seismic isolation bearings. These bearings work like shock absorbers for buildings and allow the terminal to move slightly during an earthquake, instead of cracking or falling. 
This technology is also used in earthquake-resistant skyscrapers and is used to help Kansai's terminal withstand Japan's frequent earthquakes. Fun fact, the amount of glass they used to build the terminal is enough to build 10 stories of a skyscraper. Now, you might be wondering what about those megastorms that Japan gets every year? Well, since the airport sits in the middle of Osaka Bay, these megastorms, called typhoons, can cause havoc at the airport. So, Kansai Airport had to be built to handle them. And how exactly did engineers design the airport to survive them? They raised the airport's runways and terminals over 10 feet above sea level to avoid flooding from storm surges. Also, you know those beautiful windows at Kansai terminals? Well, they are made from special reinforced glass that can stand up to high-speed winds and flying debris. Engineers also build structures called breakwaters, which are walls around the island that absorb the force of the waves. These walls are the first line of protection against the sea, helping keep Kansai safe during the worst storms. And it's a good thing they added these features into the design, because in 2018, Kansai Airport faced Typhoon Jebi, one of the strongest typhoons to hit Japan in 25 years. Although the airport got flooded and had to close temporarily, it reopened just a few weeks later. This event showed the mega resilience of the airport's design. A key part of any airport is the runways, where the planes take off and land. And Kansai's airport is no exception. It has two runways, both carefully designed to be flat and strong, so that airplanes can safely take off and land on this man-made island. Engineers used a special concrete reinforced with steel to make the runway strong enough for the megaweights and vibrations caused by airplanes. The amount of concrete they used was insane, equal to the amount needed to build a large dam. And to keep the surface smooth, engineers also installed drainage systems under the runways to keep water from weakening the concrete. This way, Kansai's runways stay safe and strong, rain or shine. An added cool feature is that even though the runway lights are bright enough to guide planes even in thick fog, they are also energy efficient. They use LED technology, which lasts longer and uses less energy than the usual lights used in airports. Fun fact! Kansai's runway lights are so bright that they could light up an entire small town. Now, something else engineers were smart enough to think of was the environmental impact of building a mega airport on a man-made island. Unfortunately, the construction of the airport affected the surrounding ocean and marine life. So, engineers created artificial reefs and seagrass beds around the island to help the fish and sea creatures have places to live. These artificial habitats also protect the island from erosion, or wearing away caused by ocean waves. Kansai Airport also uses solar panels to create clean energy. And it has a high-tech recycling system that turns waste into materials that can be reused. Kansai is now seen as a model for green, sustainable airports, showing that even a mega-project can be eco-friendly. And there you have it, the engineering marvels behind the Mega Kansai International Airport is proof of what civil engineering can do. From battling a sinking island to standing strong against earthquakes and mega typhoons, Kansai represents the very best of modern engineering. So, if you ever get a chance to visit this amazing airport, remember all it took to build it and the layers of mega engineering secrets below. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed learning all about one of the most mega airports in the world. Be sure to check out our other videos and remember to like and subscribe to our channel because engineering is for everyone.